Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. For many pet boa keepers, having a tame snake that they can take out and handle on a regular basis is a top priority. Today I want to share with you some strategies that you can use to tame down your new boa and get it used to handling. If you're new to the channel, this is the place for information about all aspects of keeping and breeding boa constrictors in captivity. So if you want to learn all about these amazing animals, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming boa videos. The first step to ensure that you have a nice, calm, handleable boa is just to select a type of boa that tends to be docile and handleable. And some boas tend to interact a lot more smoothly with humans than some others. And in fact, I've done a couple videos in the past entitled Best Pet Boas and Best Beginner Boas. So check those out for the details. But I would say up front that for a lot of beginners and people that want a handleable boa, a normal Colombian pet store type boa is your best bet. This is actually a Barranquilla Colombia boa. This is a locality specific type of Colombian boa, but a lot of the boas you see available at pet stores or even at rescues, uh, you know, boas that need new homes, are just your normal garden variety, common boa, uh, non-locality specific. And in general, these animals tend to be really calm and they make great pets if you want a boa to handle. In addition, a lot of the morph boas tend to be more handleable. So these animals in general have a longer history of being bred in captivity. So a lot of their wild aggressive tendencies have been bred out. So you might want to look at getting a morph boa. Uh, there's a few types of boas I would definitely avoid. The first are wild caught boas because wild caught boas in general tend to be more aggressive and less handleable than captive bred boas. Other boas to avoid are really active or you know somewhat nervous boas. I do not recommend red tail boas, the true red tail boa, boa constrictor constrictor, for someone looking for a handleable pet. You know, although boa uh, true red tails have a lot of great characteristics and are, you know, are some of my favorite snakes. As far as a boa strictly for handling and strictly for interacting with, I would say that there are other far better choices. A lot of newbies get drawn in by the beauty of these red t true red tail boas and they get convinced that that's the boa for them. But really there's a lot better choices if your primary objective of keeping a boa is to have a handleable pet. And then there's some other nervous types like the Pearl Island boa that are really not the best for a boa if you want to handle it on a regular basis. Okay, so you have your new boa, you brought it home, and you're really excited to get started taming it down for handling. Well, the first thing I would highly recommend is you just give the animal time to acclimate to its new surroundings. So before handling your boa, I would give it at least a week just to acclimate. You just want to leave it in its new enclosure, let it adjust, you know, don't disturb it too much, and make sure that the enclosure has ideal husbandry conditions. You want a hot spot of about 90 degrees and a cool side of about 75 to 80 degrees with 60 to 80 percent relative humidity. You also want to make sure that you have hiding places on both the cool side and the hot side. So just let your boa unwind, give it a chance to adjust. Baby boas, when you first get them, can sometimes be a little bit nippy. I've had some animals arrive uh, by FedEx in packages, and I open the package and the animal instantly strikes out at me. Sometimes the boas can be, get a little bit stressed out since they're confined in this small little bag inside of a box, being shipped cross country. So you can't blame them for being a little bit testy when they first arrive. But what I've noticed with these boas that were a little bit uh, bitey when I first got them. After being allowed to calm down and just to acclimate for about a week or so, they typically all calm right down. Another thing to do before you even try to handle your boa is to make sure that it's been fed. So you don't want to handle your boa when it's hungry because it's more likely to bite you. Uh, so I would wait for about two to three days after feeding before you try handling your boa. You want to give it at least a day or two just so that it can digest and that it won't regurgitate the food item. But you also want it not to be hungry so it doesn't end up biting you. 
Now that your new boa is all acclimated and fed, you're ready to start the handling sessions. So in general, it's a good idea to announce your presence and your intent to your boa. And typically you can use a snake, cook, or some other type of tool just to gently tap on the tail of the snake in the enclosure to make your presence and your intent known. And this will also condition your snake not to be expecting food because you use a different tool like forceps or a grabbing tool to offer the food items. You basically just want to let your snake know your intentions. Once you announce your presence, typically the snake, if it was on feeding mode, it will go into handling mode. And then you can either pick it up using the snake hook in your hand, or if your snake's not aggressive, you can just use your hands to pick the snake up and take it out of the enclosure. The vast majority of new pet boas, particularly if you've selected a type that's known to be docile, are going to be relatively easy to handle and it should be pretty straightforward. So this is a year old Hog Island boa. You know, I, I, I don't really handle this animal very often, such as, you know, most of my animals I don't handle very often, but in general, they're still quite handleable, even though I haven't really worked with them. So when you take your boa out, if it falls into this category and it's not showing any outward signs of aggression, which I'll say more about in a minute, you can basically just handle it starting off for about five or 10 minutes at first and then work your way up. And in general, you should let your boa crawl from one hand to the other, making sure to support the animal at two points of its body at all times. So a small boa like this, you can successfully support with one hand, but any boa larger than about four feet, you really need two hands. You know, one of my pet peeves is these pictures of people that are dangling their big boa, they've got like a six or seven foot boa, and they're just dangling it by its neck. I mean, this just really pisses me off. So make sure you support your boa, give it the support it needs, and you can let the boa just kind of explore casually. Um, you know, it should be pretty easy for the majority of boas. You wanna read the body language. So, as I said, most boas are relatively non-aggressive. If a boa is hissing or striking, that's an obvious sign of aggression. Or if it tries to avoid you when you try to pick it up, or if it forms an S-coil, it tells you it's about to strike. Another sign is when you take the boa out, if the body gets really rigid and it kind of tries to get away from you and it's kind of jerking around, that's a sign of aggression. So read your boa's body language. And if it's showing these signs of aggressions, there's a different set of procedures you should follow, which I'll get to in a minute. In a minute. But for most relatively docile boas, you can just hold them like this and just let them explore. And I would start off with a maybe five or 10 minutes, and then you can work your way up. You know, if you want to take your boa out for up to half an hour or so, you know, you can play it by ear. But I would say about 90% or so of boas are pretty easy to tame and they don't really pose any real challenges. Which leaves about 10% of baby boas that are somewhat defensive and aggressive. And this is a Peruvian red tail who's now about six months old. You may have seen her strike out in some of my other videos. You can see I'm holding her at arm's length so she can't reach my face. You know, with a boa like this, it's important to kind of uh, hold the business end, the head, away from your face. But when you think about these baby boas in the wild, over 90% of them are consumed by predators within the first year. So it's really behooves them to be somewhat defensive and aggressive just so they can survive. And so baby boas, particularly red tails, can start off a little bit hissy and defensive. Usually they calm down after about a year or so and become noticeably calmer. And so for this particular animal, if you have one like this, I would recommend just starting off really slow. You know, take the animal out for a few minutes at a time. Also, get you, let, let the animal get used to your presence. So you may want to just open the cage or the tub, look in at the animal, don't even touch it, and then slowly, you know, start to touch it in the enclosure, and then take it out for just a few minutes at a time. And you can see she's kind of calming down now. You know, being that these animals, I don't consider them pets, I really don't handle them all that much. Um, but, you know, she would, I imagine she will calm down even without handling in about a year or so, which has been my experience with these Peruvian red tails. You can see she's hissing a little bit now, 
but overall this animal isn't behaving too bad today uh, you may have seen other videos where she did strike at me a lot of boa keepers want their pet boa to ultimately be what we call puppy dog tame. So basically a boa that you can take out and it's not going to do anything defensive or aggressive and it's just going to hang out with you and you know inquisitively explore your surroundings or its surroundings. And this is what boas are really famous for. They can have great interactions with their handler without being aggressive. And so Although most of my boas I don't handle on a regular basis, I really enjoy taking out this VPIT positive Carmel Albino boa. So this guy is, I've had for now going on four years, and he was just always calm and I thought he was such a beautiful animal. So as a result, I take him out a lot. I show him a lot to people that come over and they wanna see one of my boas. And he's really calmed down a lot. And I imagine if I took him out every day, he'd be even calmer. And so by puppy dog tame, we're not talking about a snake that comes when you call its name or they can jump through hoops or do tricks, but it's a snake that's calm and handleable. It's not gonna get away. It might sit on your lap while you watch TV and just a cool pet to just hang out with. I'm gonna end the video with a few more miscellaneous tips and pointers that are really helpful in taming down your new pet boa. So the first is to always wash your hands before you handle your boa. You want to take off any residual smells, smells of other snakes, smells of other dogs or cats or other pets, and smells of rodents. You just want a nice clean smell that your boa can associate with you. The next tip is to make sure you're in the right mental state before you handle your boa if you're at all scared of it. Because snakes, like a lot of animals, can sense fear. And if you're uncomfortable or if the snake can sense that you're uneasy, it's more likely to act aggressively or to try to get away. So just make sure you're nice and calm. If you happen to be scared of your boa, it's a good idea to have somebody in the room with you when you first start out so that they can intervene if you know anything should go uh, wrong. And also to give you a little more confidence that the handling session is going to be productive. Keep in mind that it's always important to respect your snake's wishes. Read its body language. If it doesn't want to be handled, you put it back in its enclosure. With more aggressive or defensive snakes, this may mean taking the process really slowly and that when you start off just allowing the snake to get used to its surroundings and to get used to your presence before you try to handle it. And then the handling sessions might be limited to just a few minutes a day and with regular handling the snake should eventually calm down. Another important tip is never to take your snake out in public unless it's at a herpetological club or you know some other venue where they're expecting the snake to be in public. I've heard these stories about people that walk down the street with the boa wrapped around them, often to attract attention to themselves. And I feel really bad for the snake, for the general public, and then for snake keepers in general, because these people often give a really bad uh, impression to the non-snake keeping public, and it really damages the hobby and you know our, our uh, prospect of being able to keep these animals in the future. So please, please, please do not take your snake out in public uh, unless you're at a reptile club or something like that. It's also important only to handle one boa at a time and never to mix your boa with other types of animals. You can be tempted to think that these animals are tame and that they recognize you and they're really responding to humans but they remain at large wild animals. So for that reason, it's important not to allow your snake to have contact with a dog or cat, or, you know, or any other type of pet animal you might keep, be keeping. And actually the, he's showing me his body language by getting a little rigid that he probably wants to go back. So I'm gonna put it back in a second. But do not mix your snakes with other animals. It can only be bad for both the snake and for the other animal. So the video is almost over, but I thought I'd grab another boa that's gotten to the point where I would consider it to be puppy dog tame. This is my uh, anerythristic Paraguana Peninsula boa from Venezuela. And this animal, when I take him out, he just kind of hangs out. He's not trying to get away, not acting aggressively at all. You know, calm. You know, I don't take him out for all that long, but if I wanted to take this animal out and you know, keep him out for half an hour or an hour, he would probably just hang out like this and just you know, provide some companionship and some you know, interesting, beautiful steak to look at. 
So another snake that I get out a lot when my non-snake keeping friends come over and want to see a snake. So that was some tips about handling your boa and taming down your boa for handling. I hope this video was helpful. As always, feel free to shoot me a message via social media if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.